I take it literally. Um, the the kind of allegorical idea comes from the uh, the, the translation from Hebrew, uh, Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew, not okay. the modern fake Hebrew, the Yiddish. Um, Paleo Hebrew being a pictographical um, <coughs> concrete language and translated to an abstract, um, you know, symbolic language. Yeah, when you translate it, you know the it comes across as a kind of allegory, you know, type kind of story, okay, fairy story type thing. But uh, no, it's not. You said that you've been studying uh, language, and I was asking if it was the quantum language that David Wynn Miller talks about. You said it's beyond that. Mm -hmm. What are you studying in terms of language? Well, um, I, I was I was kind of led by a really strange uh, experience to to look at Paleo Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew. Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's it. I'm convinced now that it's the original language of man. Okay. Of um, all men. Of all humanity. People. Yes. Okay. Um, Why are you convinced? Well, one of the reasons is that um, if you look at Paleo Hebrew and look at the characters. And Im imagine, um, or, or not, not imagine, but if you if you go west of Jerusalem, the uh -huh. area, yeah, you find that um, all the languages read left to right. Left to right, okay. Yeah? Um, Paleo Hebrew reads right to left, yeah. Okay. So all the languages west read left <coughs> to right, yeah, and they're symbolic languages. That means the letters don't mean anything; they're just let, they're just shapes. Okay. Yeah? If you go east of jerusalem everything reads left to right uh sorry right, right to, to left. left yeah and they're all pictographical languages right so you can like imagine chinese all the and mandarin chinese japanese uh, arabic um uh, egyptian you can't go to the greek letters to figure out certain things in hebrew you have to go to living quote unquote shemitic languages such as ethiopic and arabic right even though there's like many dialects of uh, of of uh of Arabic, it's still a living language. Like uh, Ishmael did not die out because since Ishmael is a living language or Ishmael's language, Arabic. Remember, Hagar wasn't wasn't uh, a Hamite. She was an Egyptian princess. She was with our forefather, Sumerian Abraham, and they gave birth to Ishmael, which we call Arab, which means dark skin. So you see here the Arabic alphabet, right? I'm sorry for my last video I made. This is Samak, Samak, and this is Shan, with, or what the Yids call Shin. I'm sorry, so I made that mistake. And this is Za'ad, they call it in Arabic Sa'ad, right? Let me get something real quick. All right, you the old Syrian, Syrian Aramaic, right? Uh, look, it says Sade, but it's Za'de. There wouldn't be three S's. Look, you see they, they say Samakat. And you got chin, shin. So there wouldn't be three S's, just like there's not three k, k. There's k, there's k, and there's qua. In in uh, like quaff, cough, where's k? Well, they call it het, but it's k, right? This is the old Syriac Aramaic language. Here's our um, old ancient Hebrew, right? Now I want to point to something real quick. You see here, there's a wa. Wow, and a yod, okay, and you see that there is a alaf and a ayan. Ayan here, alaf here, wow, and yod. The reason why this is important because these these four letters are actually instrumental in the formation of vowels. This is our 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 pre pre you know a uh, 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 Hebrew language called Akkadian. You get the wa and all that there, you know, so forth and so on, right? And you got the Assyrian script. See a wa and a yod. This is important. It's important why I'm, I'm showing you this. There's a reason. Hold on. And other Semitic script. You got the Ethiopic. You see a wa there. A wa and a ya, ya. Uh, and the sade or zade. Um, you got af and you got al alaf. Alf, okay, Ayan. I don't know what what why there's an off there, but Ayan and Alaf. Now this is important. Let me show you why. Now let me show you something, right? 
The word alaf, the very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is a e. Like when you say the word like alahayim, alahayim, right? Alahayim. When you add a yod, you get the word a. Now I'm going to show you something. Let's get to uh, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 15 real quick. Let me show you this. It's, it's going to get through all, except for use. Oh. Now, you yid lovers, yid loving raccoons, you can thumb down the video all you like, but the, pro the point of the matter is, I still wash you up in the Torah. So obviously, the Spirit's not working with you. And how are you going to have how can another people you got discontinued from your heritage how is another people going to 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 you know tell you you know they didn't like you know they don't even speak hebrew they speak yiddish like you know what i'm saying why are you teaching and following jewish people like li listen to their name it's jewish right like like this dude's like all proud like you know what i'm saying like you know right jewish nigga let me show you something real quick. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 16. Look, Nabe, Nabe, A, Nabe, A. Now, obviously, you wouldn't say Nabe, A with the, with the uh, uh, Yod, Alaf, and Yod. Yay. Well, if you were to say it fast, it'd be like, E, Nabe, Nabe. Not, you wouldn't be like Nabe, A, Nabe, A. It'd be like Nabe, A. So it sounds like Nabi, which you would get your E, your E from, your, you know, your E sound. Uh, ha, na, be, yam. See that yam, the, the, the yod and the mem, or mam. Na, be, yam means prophets, right? Now, let me say something. They'd be like, the, the yids be like Nabi, but it's Nabe. Okay? It, nabe, it's right there. Ha, Nabia, yeah, Nabia, right? Not all, Nabia. Like because the, the alaf. Get something real quick. And with a with a y, it you get a strong a, a. So you saw the the two, with the I'm sorry, it's Nabia. Just where you get your, you're going to get your E sound somewhat from that. Clearly, if you look in here, you don't see any vowels. The only vowels we have are Alaf and Ayan. And these two, these two A's, along with Yod and Wa, will allow you to get different vowel sounds. Let me give an example, right? So, you see Alaf here, right? Uh, Ayan, Ayan, with the Alaf, with the very first A, not Ayan, the Ayan's numerical value is 70 i'm talking about the one that's one and 1000 now if you switch this with the ayan a with with this a it means i right this is so you you got your i sound from from ayan with a yod is where you would get the i sound from look ayan i sound ayan i fountain but if you have Again, with an Aleph, it means we're, or is it not, from Aleph. It looks, it looks like they're spelled the same, but the but the A's change up the vowel sounds. Uh, let me get another example, right? Uh, with the Ayan, with this letter, and a Yod, you get I. It means a ruin or a heap. But if you, do I have that? Wait, hold on, let me find it. If you, if you do an Aleph with a Yod, you get a which which is the same is still uh where is it it was not where what you know a uh let me give another example um an a and a w because remember this is with with the a and a with the ayan and a and a yaw you get the i sound but with the i with the um ayan and a and a wa you get a kind of an o sound makes an example a war Awar from 7802. Awar. It means awake, naked, blind. Awar. Not a left, not this A, that A. So you're getting your vowels from from the from your two A's with the yods and the and the and the was. Uh, let me give you another great example. Go to six one four nine and six one five nine in your strongest 
concordant dictionaries if you have one look up this word for um in 6149 to 6159 all all look all rob all all Oh, Rob, right? Or Al Rob. It means a raven, dusky, sweet, sweet, pleasant, a mixture, a mixed multitude, evening, dark, right? Now, that's that. That's with that A. When you use this A, watch how it changes from Al Rob to Arab. Arab. Don't they say Arab? Arab. It means to lurk, to ambush, to wait. A locust, grasshopper, spoil, wind, window, chimney, right? Like to like wait and to ambush to steal something from somebody. Just two, the same spelling, just two different A's. With this one, it means dark, dark skinned or mixed multitude or evening or whatever. And this one means to steal pretty much, to be a burglar or a, a ambusher or, or you know, to lie in wait to, to spoil people. Now, let me give you another good example. So this all, look, and you see with the W, all rob, all rob, all, all, oh, all rob. Look, the, the eyeball, you see it's I and it's round. That's the, the original thing. All, it, oh, anyway, I'll give you another example. Uh, 5849 with the, with the uh, yon is the word at atar, not at atar, atar. It means a circle. A crown, a compass, a tar. Oh, I'm trying to give you another another example. Let me give you an example with a with a a word starting with um the left but ending with ayan. The word for four, the number four is araba. Araba. Rabba, araba. It means four or square from seven oh two to seven oh three. Uh let me give you another example. How some Hebrew words done came into um what well, I have on there. I want to show you something. Hold on. How some Hebrew words kind of like came into the English uh, language, but they fudged it up. Is the word Iowa or Iowa, Iowa? It it, is, it means perverse or silly or foolish from one nine one. But look, doesn't this word look like evil? Evil, Iowa. We don't say v. We say w. It's a wow, not v. Some people be trying to use substitute w for b with a b, which is that's complete Yiddish foolishness, right? This is from the Yids, okay? The the they call it the Torah Institute, okay? But the letters U and W are new developments and are mutations of what began as a Hebrew letter, then went into Greek and finally Latin. The original Hebrew shape was Y, or the Greek shape was also Y and called Upsalom. The Latin dropped the stem, the Latin, not the Hebrew, dropped the stem and became a V. But still sounded as a double U, as in school, and better understood as the sound of the modern English letter U. To the Orthodox and Chassidim, the word for school is shul. We get that Yiddish. Okay? Yiddish. The sounds for V and W are rather new. Okay? A letter commonly expressed today as wow. Okay? Just like we. we just, now look. So you have a whole bunch of hua, raccoon negroes. You know, talking about some 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 hua. The tetragrammaton is therefore more accurately rendered as Yahu, standing for the letters Yod Hey Ua Hey. What? Okay. First off, now let's just just disprove that is false. Let's just go back to our ancient. Hmm. Wow. Wow and Yod are two different two different letters. So, but let's get some right you know yiddish negroes be speaking yiddish let me show you something okay now since arabic and you know ishmael and isaac were brothers our languages are pretty much the same you know you, you see the, the arabic they oh i'm gonna show you something too in the in what they did in, uh, in arabic you're gonna, you're gonna see this see that arabic how to say the word and with a w wa now according to raccoons Jewish Negroes, it's ooh. Well, let's see how our brother, who still, you know, his 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 Shemitic branch of his tongue is still existent. Let's see if we can get a sound on that. What? Wait, ooh. What? No, wait, ooh. What? No, 
Ma'am, come on. Did, ooh. What? Well, okay, 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 okay. Ooh. What? Okay, well, Arabic. What? All right, there we go. Oh, I'm sorry. One more time for the Yiddish Negroes. What? Okay, thank you. Hmm. What does that say? This is a Hebrew. Wait a minute. This is Arabic. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, ma'am. One more time. What? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Learn Arabic. Let me show you something. See this word here? They say anti. Just, now, where they get their vowels from? We're going to get to that in a second. But you notice that the word he, which it pretty much means like it is, and she, look, the word is hawa. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. What? What did the yid say again? Ooh. I'm sorry. Wait. Ooh. I'm sorry. Ooh. Wah. Oh, okay. All right. Haya. Hayet would be the feminine. Hawa would be the masculine. And then there's like the actual Hawa, you know, like, which means to exist. This word is also connected to the word um, uh, Kawa, which is like the feminine will be uh, Eve's name. And it's connected to the word Khat, which means to live. It says, to say, for example, I'm a boy, Ana Walad. In Hebrew, it would be Ane. Ane. They say Ana. I, we say yalad, they say walad, all right? So you're not gonna be able to find this in, in Greek and Latin. You have to go to our brother languages to figure out what's really going on with our languages. Now, let me show you something real quick. So you got the, the, this is the Arabic alphabet. They added more letters to the alphabet. That's a fact. Any Muslims out there or Moors who wanna debate that, I will smash you. They added more letters to the alphabet, the, the Arabic alphabet, they added more. And they added what is called diacritic marks to, to like formulate vowels. Diacritical markers were added for non-Arabs. Let's just pull this up so you can see what, Quran alone best hadith of Allah. The original manuscript of the Quran does not have the signs indicating the vowels in the Arabic script. One more time. The original manuscript of the Quran does not have the signs indicating the vowels in the Arabic script. Just like the Hebrew. In addition to the diacritical marks, there are other forms of vocalization marks that change the pronunciation and meaning of a given word. These marks include the Dhamma, Fatha, Kasra, Shada, Skun, Mada, etc. They are put above or below the letters to affect its pronunciation. Watch this. The Arabs did not require the vowel signs and diacritical marks for correct pronunciation of the Quran since it was their mother tongue. Okay? They didn't require vowel sounds and diacritical marks for the Quran. For Muslims of non Arab origin, however, it was difficult to recite the Quran correctly without the vowels. These marks were introduced into the Quranic script. During the time of the fifth Umayyad Caliph, Malik R. Marwan, 66 to 86, he, he, I think it's Hijara, 685 to 705, Christian era during the governorship of El Hajjaj in Iraq. These marks were introduced into the Quranic script. The Quran did not have vowels in it, just like the Torah doesn't. But somebody was adding in diacritical marks and and, and, and this and that and whatever, right? And then adding in their own vowels. Some people argue the present copy of the Quran that we have along with the vowels and diacritical marks is not the same original Quran that was present at the Prophet's time, right? He's an apologist. Arabic diacritics. You see like little, little, little markings in there. The tanwin, tanwin marking symbols serves a grammatical role in Arabic. The sign is most commonly written in combination with alif or alaf. All right, so so they've been, they added even on to their own stuff. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Watch this. The Arabic script evolved from the Nabatian Aramaic script. Let's get that real quick. The Nabatian Aramaic script. The Arabic script evolved from the Nabatian Aramaic script. Syriac, Aramaic, which is nothing but Old Hebrew, just different. They just wrote their their um 
their letters are a little different. But look, it's all the same. Allah, Faf, Gamal, Dalaf, He, Waz, Zayan, Khat, Tet, Yad, Kaf, Lamad, etc., etc. The Arabic script evolved from the Nabation Ara Aramaic script. It has been used since the 4th century AD. But the earliest document, an inscription in Arabic, Syriac, and Greek, dates from 512 AD. The Aramaic language has fewer consonants than Arabic. Wait a minute. See that? The Aramaic alphabet has fewer consonants than Arabic. Let's find out why. The Aramaic language has fewer consonants in Arabic, so during the 7th century, new Arabic letters were created by adding dots to existing letters in order to avoid ambigu ambiguities. Further diacritics indicating short vowels were introduced, but are only generally used to ensure the Quran was read aloud without mistakes. So I was correct. These little dots and, and whatnot in here are later additions, and they added more letters to, like, for instance, right? Look, why is there a dal and dad? There's not two Ds. There's only one D, dalat. You see they added more. Wait, wait a minute, look. There's a thal, a tha, and a ta. That's in another ta, in another tha. So let's get it again. The Aramaic language has fewer consonants than Arabic. So during the seventh century, new Arabic letters were created by adding dots to existing letters in order to avoid ambigu ambiguities. So you have it, folks. The history of U and V. The letters U and V will be considered together as in the medieval period, they were interchangeable. U and V. Hmm, wait, do we have is there a U in Arabic or in the Hebrew? I don't see a U anywhere. I sure as hell don't see a V anywhere. We have wow. The letters U and V will be considered together as in a medieval period, they were interchangeable. In Latin, there was no difference between them. In Latin. In, in Latin, wait, you mean like Edomite? You mean like, wait a minute. Hmm? Huh? The English alphabet contains three letters, U, V, and W. The sounds of V and W are rather new, but you know, they're going on, you know, blah, 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 right? You notice it says the Greek shape and it's called Upsalom. Wait a minute, Upsalom. Wow. Upsalom. Wow. Okay, let's go back. In Latin, there's no difference between them and some Latin grammars refer to V as consonantal U. How was it actually pronounced is contentious. In my school days, they taught us to pronounce it like W. While English, French, and Germanic languages have their own distinct sounds for V, the letter was not generally distinguished graphically at the time. This said, the basic form of the letter or letters remains fairly constant over time. The biggest problem comes from disentangling it from the similar words within words. Okay? In the Old Roman square capitals, both U and V have this angular form. Okay? Old or Roman. Wait a minute. Hebrew. Old Roman, Edomite. Let's keep it going. In the old rustic script. In the unctual script. In the new Roman, the minuscule U and V both have a minimalist rounded form. In the pre Carolingian minuscule scripts of national hands, the only difference relates to blah, blah, blah. In the 6th century half unctual script, U and V are broad and squarish. 6th century. In a specialized book scripted by Corby Ab, they sport little wedges at the top. In an old Italian book hand, the top letters of the letter curve, blah, blah, blah. This example of Merovingian middle school or Germanic book hand has the U and V with little wedges top to bottom. The specialized Lexiwill minuscule. The Visigoth script U and V are much the same. The Vis Visigothic. The formal script known as the insular half unsure has produced broad, sturdy letters, blah, blah, blah. Well, you like notice it all. Look, the Merovingian Chancery script. Where is the Hebrew in here? I don't see. In the development of Gothic book hands, letters became laterally compressed, and certain letters, including I, N, M, U, and V, were constructed from repeating segments called minims. While the basic forms of U and V remained similar, they tended to become more angular and compressed. Blah, blah, blah. So, wait a minute. Nothing to do with Hebrew here. French. The, the proto-Gothic U or V from the 12th century French book. The 14th century Gothic rotunda version. The 13th century Gothic textura. The Gothic prasissa. 
the 15th century Dutch language formal Gothic texture. And it goes on and on. Clearly, saying the Most High's name with a U is incorrect. Incorrect. Look, look at the Yid. He says, when we spell the Creator's name with English letters as Yahuwah, wait, I'm sorry. Ooh. What? Wait, no, wait, ooh. What? Okay. Ancient aliens, all right. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I can't find that. Where is that? Where did I go? Oh, well. Get your knowledge up, man. The, the A's, the Y's, and the, and the Y's determine our vowel sounds. We don't need dots in, in Yiddish and, and foolishness. You're just seeing what they did to Arabic. They added letters and, 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 and dot points to indicate vowels. Now, since we were removed from our heritage, obviously the language have died too. So our people have to like n not rely on outside sources for our, for our own language. This is why I'm always saying we need to get more scholarly, all right? It's, 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 it's you know, it's all the time of doctrine and, and dogma and shit. Like, come on, man, this shit is played out, man. It's played out. Whoever had some knowledge of the Hebrew must have been speaking Arabic because clearly, you know, and, and you know, clearly you see it's, it's, it with the Syrian and all that and Ethiopic, it's pretty much the same language, linguistic branch. What you say to the people of our our people who just not aware of uh, how deep this deception go? Because when we talk about the Jews and how they took our language and made it into their language to hide a lot of stuff, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I learned so much today in like ten minutes talking to this brother. I'm gonna let him continue on with the Jewish deception and the difference between Yiddish. Jewish and just the deception with the language because a lot of people talk about the Jews but don't really know exactly the role they played so I'm gonna let Dave give y'all a little rundown. Well we had a, a, our own language, uh, it was actually the very first language, it was a language that um, Adam spoke to the creator with, yeah? it was paleo Hebrew. Okay, so we look we could speak about this you know, for the next two hours because it's an amazing language. Once you get into it, you know, it, will, it excites you. You know, yeah. you, you, you kind of really. I'll, I'll give you an example of how it works. Okay, um, in English, we'd use a word like "sun" as in offspring. You know, and it's just a sound. You know, and we, we associate that sound, "sun," with a small child, you know, a small boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in Hebrew. The word for, for sun is the letters B and N, yeah? Um, ba and N, N, Ba and N, so it comes out as Ba, okay? B is a, is a picture of a tent, okay? And um, that means house, home, family, every, every word has about eight or nine meanings, yeah? House, home, family, bloodline, you know, you can, from those means, you get one kind of feeling what that means. Mm -hmm. okay? The letter N is a picture of a, of a seed sprouting. Yeah? It means mm -hmm. seed, continuation, um, you know, bloodline. Yeah? You put those together, it means continuation of the family. That's what a son is. Mm -hmm. is that, can you get that? It's like a, you can, you can it's a picture that, that tells a story, that tells you the meaning of what the thing is. Mm -hmm. It's not like English. English is an is a, a, a abstract language. You have to learn by listening to a word and then associating it with a, with a thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So Hebrew, Paya Hebrew is, you see a picture and it, it hits you here and you understand what it means by Symbology. Yes. It's, it's a central form of language yeah. as well. It's a word picture. Yeah. Okay? And not only every letter is a word picture. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Every word made up of letter, letters is a story that those letters um, represent that tells you the meaning. And when you tell a whole story with those words, that whole story is a word picture. Mm -hmm. 
And that's kind of like what I be doing it to with the symbolism and alphabets. And so they took this language, Paleo-Hebrew, which was our original language, and today what most of the black country's community is calling uh, Hebrew language is not that. It's not, absolutely not. Wow. Um, whenever we were um, taken into captivity, we've been taken into captivity a lot, mm -hmm. the first thing they did was um, tell us we couldn't use our own language. We had to learn the local language. Yeah? Same as with this uh, latest captivity, we had to dump whatever language we knew and had to learn English. Okay? Very symbolic language, as I said, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so what they did is they killed Paleo Hebrew. It's not just a dead language, it's a killed language. Mm. Yeah, they deliberately suppressed it and then they overlaid it with this new language, new modern Hebrew, which isn't Hebrew, it's Yiddish. Mm. Okay? And it's, it's, it's very similar, it's, it's structured in a, a kind of familiar way to, to Paleo Hebrew. Mm -hmm. but, um, but in actual fact, it's, it's, it's there to hide the meanings. Okay? <coughs> So if you know some of the rules of Paleo Hebrew, such as um, there are no vowels in Paleo Hebrew, and okay. okay, there's only an A, a sound and an I, and that I is hardly ever used. But there's no there's no vowels, there's no O's, no E's, no U's. Kind of like the, the first comedic language where they say they didn't have any vowels. Well, that's that's the thing. If you if you realise that uh, well, I said to you earlier on that um, Paleo Hebrew is the very first language. Yeah. Um, if you look at all the languages around it, every language uh, west of uh, Jerusalem is a symbolic language. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's not a picture, it's a symbolic, but it's abstract. Yeah? Every language east of, the, of uh, Jerusalem is pictographical, you know, like Chinese and Japanese and, uh, and Arabic, the mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah? So you can see how languages spread from that one spot. And that was the Tower of Babel, and all the languages got confused, yeah? They just spread out from that point. That's why all the stories are the same stories, but told through different languages and different, you know, a different sort of language mindset. Yeah, that's why all the things are the same, because it's the same story, yeah? So, um, so that, that's, that's what's going on. It's, um, uh, you're saying it's kinetic, it's not kinetic really, it's, it's Hebrew. And you know the, the people from Kemet will say, "Oh no, Africa! They they came up with it first. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Yeah. You can see how it progressed from Paleo Hebrew. Mm. So um, so yeah, so the uh, modern so-called Hebrew is there to, to hide things. And I was giving you the example: the, the word devils um, means this sayir, S A I Y R, in uh, in Paleo Hebrew. Um, and that means hairy, red, goat, uh, demon, demon-possessed goat. Mm. Um, and that gives you a kind of feeling of what a demon, demon is, so you, yeah. you'd stop there. But if you look at the, uh, the modern Hebrew, there's another word, S-E, apostrophe I-Y-R. And you might be um, forgiven for believing that's a, a separate word, but there's no E in Hebrew. So, you take, if you re replace the E with an A, it's the same word. Mm -hmm. So you look at those meanings, you find it's a, a place in, uh, in the Caucasus Mountains called Mount Seir. Uh, it means, um, again, uh, hairy, uh, red, uh, goat, he goat, yeah? But you get the feeling, if you know how the Bible works, yeah, if you get the feeling of all those words all put together. So I, I asked the question, um, you know, how is it that we come into this world not understanding, you know, our mothers or our, um, our people around us, like right. all the other animals, they understand, you know, they, can, they cats know how to meow and dogs know how to bark and everything, they don't have to be taught, yeah? yeah? So well, as soon as I asked that question, I got some uh, research about um, a 15th century king of Scotland who wanted to know if, if babies could speak. So what he did, he marooned a, a deaf and dumb woman on, a, on, on an island with two newborn babies. Okay. Left them there for years. And then came back to see if these two children who were brought up in silence, if they could speak.
Okay. The, the results of the experiment were lost, suppressed, I think. But what happened was the people who lived in the area all say that these two boys spoke perfect Hebrew. Without ever having learned it. Without ever having learning, learned it. Now, the thing about Paleo Hebrew. Yeah, what is. I don't understand what. what okay, what's it's how, how it Yiddish. sounds. How it, it's not the Yiddish uh, modern Hebrew. But how it sounds, there are no vowels in it. There's only um, an uh, assumed R sound after every consonant. But that's yeah? the same that they say is, is biblical, right? Yes. Because there's no biblical, vowels like yeah. Yahweh. It yes. doesn't have a, like vowels in there. Yeah, but or, I'm Yahweh sorry, yeah, has got an E in it. The A bit. Okay. Okay. Not an R sound, yeah? Okay. Um, so, if you think of it, the what the letters are a ba ga da ra ha la yeah? Okay. What does that sound like? A ba ga baby. Baby song. Yeah? Ba ba ba. Father is Abba. Abba. Like Papa. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Mother is Amma. Like <laughs> Mama. Dunstan baby language thing that I've heard I about. I don't know what that is. Okay, that, that's that's something similar. Basically, it's like looking at the sounds that a baby makes to ascertain what they're feeling and what they want. And so that's kind of, but I don't know if it's getting into the Paleo Hebrew at all. Yeah, I don't know I, what that's all about. So I'd, I'd have to look into that. But, um, wow. but, you know, you can imagine it, you know, a, a baby coming into this world and going, hey, mom, I'm here. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the mother going, goo, goo, go, go, oh, you little. And the baby's like, oh, you don't speak the language. I'm uh, going to have to learn yours then. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, interesting. so what is all this meaning for you then? Like, what, like, wh where. Where, where are you going with it? Like, what well, does it mean in the, in the bigger term of things? Well, first of all, it means that we're, we've been lied to about our whole entire lives. Yeah, we've been indoctrinated into a, into a language that's a programming language for the human mind, yeah? Um, being a programmer, I started to realize, um, well, I actually started to realize when I saw Paleo Hebrew, right, next to, um, Greek, Latin, and English, yeah? And it, it said um, pictograph, or pictogram, for the Paleo-Hebrew, and then when it got to the English, it said symbol for each letter. Symbol. Uh -huh. What a symbol, what's a symbol? Symbol's like a variable in, in programming. Right, right. So a symbol can stand for, for one thing or another, and you can change what that symbol stands for. So, right. with the English language, you can, just like um, legalese, you can change the definition right, right. And, and alter somebody's way of thinking just by changing a definition. Huh. Yeah, so that's how they use, they program out our minds with language. Because language is a part of like when one culture over, overtakes another culture, <laughs> it's like religion, banking, language, um, and these types of things are like the first things that get taken over, right? Well, you've got to remember that there's only, there's only one bloodline that's warlike. And it's that bloodline has been has been conquering people, forcing them to learn their languages. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. He will save us. 